All right, welcome back to the Champion Acres uh, YouTube channel. Today we are working on the cabin build, but we're not up at the cabin. We're actually back home working on truss plates. So these are going to be some plates that hold um, the big trusses together that are going to hold the, on the two gables. Well, there's one gable and one porch, but they're both going to have um, these timber trusses on them. So let me show you what um, we're working on, and then we'll go out and see if we can cut some of these plates out. All right, to start with, so here is our, here's our truss that's going to be on the large gable end. And you can see it's got a 32-foot wide beam on the bottom. The top beams are, I think, like 20-some, 21, 22 feet. But all these black um, plates you see here, with, those need to be cut out of metal. And they basically sandwich together the timbers to form a structural truss. So those are cut out of quarter-inch steel and bolted through through bolted with um i try to remember how many exactly how many bolts i think it's 70 or 80 bolts or something there's a lot of bolts um anyway so we got the one big truss that i'm showing you here we're, we're working on those plates right now and then this morning we already cut the, the plates that go on this little truss this is just on the porch um but there will be you know brackets like this that uh hold it together form it into a structural truss. And the drawings we were given, you know, they look like this pretty much. So we got uh, dimensions on how far apart all the holes need to be and the length of the beams or the, you know, the struts, width of the struts and stuff. So first thing I've been doing here, and it's nice to work inside so you're not uh, out in the heat, is you draw it up in CAD. So we got the, this is a large truss we're looking at here. It's all drawn up. And let me see if I can uh, zoom this in a little bit here. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Oh yeah, look at that, we are. So this is the one we're gonna work on. This is kind of the, the center of the large truss. And so you can see it's got the five holes in the bottom and then the three spokes going out holding the individual um, uh, parts of the truss together. So we're gonna try to load that into the computer out in the shop and see if we can cut this out. All right, so here on the ground are the ones for the smaller uh, truss, the one on the porch. So this is gonna be, I think, a 10 foot wide truss. And so these are, and they're made out of six by six beams. So that should be fairly simple, not a whole lot of holes. Um, you can see though, it's a quarter inch thick plate and cut out on the plasma table. I mean, it's pretty, pretty decent. These will get painted black and uh, large bolts will get run through these to uh, sandwich the wood together between them. So. so anyways, let's run inside and see if we can cut out some of the larger ones that I was just showing you. Okay, so before we get started, here is our homemade CNC plasma table. So basically there is um, a plasma torch right there that will uh, cut metal. It's kind of like a cutting torch, but it uses a uh, plasma electronic arc to create the heat. And then the computer that sits down here below, right there, drives the torch around on these motors. So it's kind of a cool little setup down below over here. We've got our uh, plasma cutter back here. And then this is our control panel that we had to put together. So we can do another video on this later, kind of showing all the components and how it all works. But the computer basically talks to this set of electronics, which drives the motors and turns the plasma cutter on and off. So around here, looking at the computer, Oh, computer went to sleep. Let's see if we can wake up our computer. Okay, so here we've got our truss plate loaded down already, and you can see the cut path. So you can see where um, this is where the torch is currently. It'll drive up here, 
looks like up to this spot. Um, no, actually it's going to start here. It's going to start cutting this hole here, and then this hole, and then that hole, and this hole, then jog up over here. So anyways, in theory it's supposed to cut all the inside holes first, and then cut out the perimeter. Because once you cut the perimeter, the part's loose and it may fall um, into the table. Away from where it's normally at. But anyways, let me uh, set the let me set the phone up here on a tripod, and we'll see if we can get an action shot of this uh, of this plasma cutter in action. Nice. So I'll take that outside and uh, get it all cleaned up and we'll try to cut another one. As you can see here, this is the top side. Um, the holes are looking really good. There's just a teeny bit of, uh, I don't know what you call it, slag or flash on here. But you can just kind of like, just kind of knock it off. Let's see a little bigger one on this side. Let's see how that. Yeah. So anyway, so the top looks really clean. There's a little bit on the edge here. We'll have to scrape and clean up some of the other holes. Let's uh, turn around and look at the back side. This thing's kind of heavy. This is a quarter inch plate, so it's uh, it's not light. Okay, so this hole here, again, this is the bottom. We've got just a little bit. That's a little, a little more tight. That's probably where the, the cut started. So that's pretty much all coming off. Same on this one just a little bit. So anyway, it's going to take this real minor cleanup to uh, get this into a usable piece. I may soften the edges with the grinder just a little bit, just to, so they're not sharp, but it's really not required. I mean, it's going to be up in the air. Nobody's going to be touching it once it's installed. And the quality of the cut on the edge is just awesome. I don't know if we can see it here in the light. I don't know if it'll focus on that or not. Anyways, it's probably not going to focus, but you just have to trust me. It looks it looks pretty good. Not like laser cut or water jet cut, but really good for a plasma cutter. Let's see if I can look out from the other side. Maybe the other side will focus better. A um, little bit there. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see there, I mean, that's that's probably about as good as you're going to get with a plasma cutter. Um, so really happy with that. 
So anyways, I'll finish cleaning that one up and then uh, load the file again and try to cut another one. Because for every one we make, there needs to be a pair that kind of sandwich the wood together. So you need one on the front, one on the back. So let me go get that uh, cleaned up, get the other file ready, and then we'll, uh, we'll try to do another cut. It's kind of bright. Okay. I mean, you're okay. Just don't stare at it for a while. I didn't even move. Dropped a teeny bit on that corner. Yeah, there's a piece of foot in there held it, huh? Alright, here we are welding on a little tab onto this uh, truss plate. And we left just, they're both quarter inch steel. And with a little gap so the weld will penetrate a little better. It's clamped down to a scrap piece of uh, steel so it stays flat. Because whenever you weld on one side, it'll tend to pull over. And we got our uh, expert welder here, Lucas, ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, all right, man, let's hit it and see how it goes. Man, that looks good. Lucas is our, our most recently trained welder. He's had welding class, so that's why you get the good looking welds there. So we'll let that cool for just a second and then uh, flip it over and hit the other side and it'll be, it'll be one piece. All right, so today we're back working on the truss brackets and we've got them all cut out. The ones that need to be welded have been welded and it's time to do some finishing on them. Now you can see here, we got them laid out on the table and we're gonna be just kind of taking the little uh, um, flap disc and just kind of knocking off a little bit of this burr that showed up. I mean, it's really not bad coming right off the table. There's a couple little bits here where like the plasma table pierced, a little bit of metal there. So anyways, kind of cleaning all that up, degreasing them, and honestly, the right thing to do would be to take these babies in and have them powder coated, sandblasted, powder coated for the ultimate durable finish. So that being the right thing to do, what we're going to do is we're going to shake them, shoot them. We're going to paint them up. Now, I don't yet think that this is like a total, you know, redneck slop job we're doing here because look at this. I've actually primed them. That's right. Cleaned them up, primed them. And you can see here how careful we are to keep everything super clean. You can knock off any little bits of dust that fell on there. A little bit right there. Anyway, these bad boys are ready. So we're gonna take our can here, give them a little uh, backyard powder coat. Boom, powder coated. So anyways, I gotta do the rest of these guys 
And then I got this set of uh, brackets on the table to clean up prime and paint. Then I think there's one more set and we'll be done. So, so hopefully soon we'll be, uh, um, brackets will be all done, painted, and ready to be installed on the beams, which I did get a call. The beams are ready to be picked up. So hopefully here um, in the next episode, I'll be able to pick the beams up, get those up on site, and assemble the truss. That's our, probably our last big thing to put together for the house. Um, everything else is kind of small and minor, you know, lightweight stuff. That's the last big heavy thing. So anyways, um, thanks for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and hit like. And if you want to see more videos like this, um, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.